Welcome geniuses, I'm Genie, your best buddy for A-Levels. In this channel, we'll bring you to explore the secret formula behind success. Hey folks, her name is Long, which, in her opinion, makes her cool because it simultaneously means both Dragon and Loon Shark. The only animated show she enjoyed was Shrek, the one with the donkey. She had an unhealthy obsession with Samyang Noodles during her A-level years, and she's obsessed with Doctor Who. But rest assured, she's a very, very stable individual. She's from Klang, thus making Bakute her only personal trait, which would mean... fattening? Hey guys, I'm Long. So, the geniuses are really curious. What are the characteristics of a good chemical engineering personal statement? Since I was applying to Cambridge, I was encouraged to make my PS more academic. It is said that one third of a PS have to be about your co-curricular activities, but uh, I cut down a bit on that to make space for the academic bits. So for chemical engineering, you can pick a topic that you're passionate about and make sure you do plenty of research on it because like I feel PS for sciences they are more structured and uh, there's usually a certain flow that people seem to follow. It usually starts with an introduction to the topic that you're interested in and then uh, you go on to talk about your A-level subjects and basically how much of a nerd you are and then you may bring up a certain engineering related project that you've done in the past and talk about the kind of problems that you encountered and, and how you tackled them. And you can also mention a job attachment that you did and uh, what you learned from it. And then you go on to talk about your uh, core curriculum activities uh, to prove that you are well equipped with some soft skills. It doesn't necessarily have to go like this, but those are basically things that you should include in an engineering PS. Don't go for cliche phrases like when I was a kid because God knows how many people have already included that in their PS. Get straight to the juicy scientific bits. Obviously, make sure you come across that you know your stuff. Use simple language and uh, when researching, of course, make sure that your source is reliable. That is very important. Use Google Scholars. Research papers instead of like random articles that you found online in case of um, inaccurate or outdated information. What are some of the books that you would recommend? Nature.com is a great place to find scientific journals. Can you tell us a little about the entrance test that you took? How you prepared for it and your experience in general? So I had to do ENGA for engineering in Cambridge. So it was after my interview. There are two papers. The first one would be MCQ questions, multiple choice questions. And uh, the second one, there was, well, more MCQ questions. You can find uh, specimen papers and uh, past papers online. The time you have to finish the paper is extremely limited. And it does not help that you are not allowed to have a calculator with you. So definitely make sure that your mental maths is, is strong enough. And you can also figure out alternative ways to simplify calculations, uh, which I'm sure you will when you are attempting the past papers. And uh, you can also practice with BMAT past papers since there are more, more of them online. I want to study engineering.org has a good question bank as well. Now, the idea of being interviewed by a group of academics is, in itself, pretty scary. In your opinion, how can one be better prepared for it? Interviews for engineers are purely academic, so you don't have to worry about answering questions about your weaknesses and strengths. These interviews are conducted by lecturers in the uni. The whole point of the interview is to convince them that you are the kind of student that they want to teach. It is very important that you guide your interviewer through your thought process as you work through a problem because they want to know how you think. The trick is to see the interview as a 30-minute discussion with a teacher. So see it as a chance to learn something. You go in, show that you're genuinely interested in, in the discussion, the problems, and if you're stuck, don't be shy to bounce off your ideas with your interviewer. And it is normal 
not to feel like you've screwed up your interview, especially if you didn't manage to solve something before the time ran out. Remember to just view this as a, a learning opportunity. You should be expecting some maths, physics, and even chemistry question for chem -eng via engineering. Graph sketching questions are very common in engineering interviews. Make sure you get used to interpreting more unusual equations like y equals to exponent x sine x or y equals to sine x over x rather than ones that you may have encountered in a level for the pure be prepared to answer questions like why does this graph look like this in the positive x region or explain the change in amplitude or frequency of this graph you might have already heard of this but desmos is definitely an app that you should check out. Use it to play with uh, different equations and try to interpret the, the graphs. Also, you might want to read over your PS the day before your interview because um, some interviewers, they might ask questions based on the things you mentioned in your PS. So make sure you're very, very familiar with everything that you've mentioned in your PS. The Cambridge University Malaysia Society, KUMAS, carries out mock interviews every year to help applicants uh, prepare for interviews. So be sure to sign up for those. They are very helpful. Anything you wish you had known before you applied? I mentioned learning about a certain equation in my PS. And my mind went completely blank when the interviewer asked me to derive it. That was very embarrassing. So just to be safe, read through your PS and uh, make sure that you know your stuff before the interview. I know nerves can be a pain, but the interviewers, they know that and they understand. So really just, just pretend that you're talking to a teacher at high school. If you feel like you've screwed up in the beginning of the interview, which I did. Don't let it get you down. You can still save things in the rest of your interview. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. I know it's easy to say, but don't. Definitely don't go into the interview room with the mindset that you must get in because that's not gonna help. That's just gonna stress you out. Just view the whole application process as a learning opportunity. You can look up potential interview questions and discuss them with your friends. So like you, you can get used to, you know, uh, presenting your thought process out loud as you will be doing uh, in your interview with your interviewer. Good luck! You got this! Alright, that's a wrap. So long, long. Pardon the pun. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. That's all for today's video. If you're interested in more genuine sharing by other geniuses, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to turn on the notification bell. Ding dong. Genie, we'll see you in our next adventure. Bye bye.